first things first. All right. So, Grandpa Joe was an amazing guy. He was a poet, and he was an artist. He was on point, guys. He would just make a poet poem in front of us in just you know like kind of like a free sighting, you know, out of nothing, you know, <laughs> freestyle. Yeah, I'll take that. So he would like make a poem like freestyle, and he's an amazing. Really talented. He's a very smart guy. He didn't need to put much effort in studying. He was very genetically talented. God blessed him as well. But he did not take care of those talents. Um, he had a life of drunkard. He spent most of his lifetime um, in drinking, um, which does resulted in not treating his family um, in a best way and which resulted loss of pain. It's because he did not, it's not because he did not have the opportunity, but he did not choose to do good. He procrastinated. All right, <clears throat> this world has a lot of things, you know, a lot, of, a lot to offer, a lot to attract. We know what, we might know, you know, what the way we're going might be wrong way. But it's because there are so many funs and things to do. It's my stuff, you know? Let me be me, you know? Please, God, let me just be me. Why didn't you just send me to the home of um, moral, um, atheists with morality? Even I thought of myself as that, you know? God, why did you send me into Seventh-day Adventist home and make my life miserable? <laughs> All right. So why do we need to follow God today? You know, guys, come on. Any brave souls here? All right, Jesus loves us. We might not get another chance. All right, all right. Okay, I like that. We might not get another chance. Because love is always better than selfishness. Okay, because love is always better than the selfishness. All right. All right. <clears throat> Can anyone read this scripture for me? It's the second scripture. It's not the one that Mr. Anthony read, but go ahead, please. <laughs> So, what does it profit us gaining this whole world and then lose our own soul? Think on that a little bit. We have a lot, a lot of choices and decisions to make. I can either choose to practice piano when I wake up in the first in the morning, or choose to know, get to know more about God, or choose to study my ACT, choose to be prepared for my test, choose to talk to my friends, choose to play basketball, choose to sleep. All right. <clears throat> Why are there so many tests in our life? We as a Seventh-day Adventist, we face lots of temptations. I would like to read this quote that really inspired me. Um, to this conclusion and the topic that I'm talking tonight. It says here, God's children are always being tested in the furnace of affliction. If they endure the first trial, it is not necessary for them to pass through a similar ordeal the second time. But if they fall, if you fall, the trial is brought to you again and again, each time being still more trying and severe. Did you get that? Thus, opportunities placed before them, you, before us, of gaining the victory and proving themselves true to God. But if they continue to manifest rebellion, God is compelled at last to remove his spirit and light from them. So, is what I'm choosing today matters with my salvation? That's what is really intriguing my mind. The small things that I choose apart from God might affect my salvation. This is what, I, what you're saying. You know, literally, like, small choices and small temptation, if you do not choose God, that might affect your salvation later on because you did not choose to endure. And it does speak to myself. Before it's too late. 
before we regret. Why did I do that? Why did I make that stupid mistake that hurt someone's mind? We should make first things first. All right? While the technology is not working, I promise you that I'm going to be done by 8 so that you can study. And for the following 15, 15 minutes, four people in America died from what they eat. And you know what? I hope that I, I'm going to cancel that out by today and tonight with this venue that I'm going to save more souls than who are dying. All right. So, well, <laughs> it's not working. I don't know what's going on. Something? Oh, sure. Right? Yeah. All right. No, that's that's, that's where I want. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay I did not finish my. The, <laughs> I did not finish the Grandpa Joe story yet. And later on, he spent thirty years, forty years of his drunk drunk world life. And later on. He was on bed. Doctors couldn't figure out what's going on. Okay, this guy is uncurable. This guy did lead the messed up life, and we do not even know how to make this guy walk again. So he basically spent most of his lifetime on the bed. And he couldn't do anything but just thinking. And he would eat just not even a food. He would just drink some liquid, liquid food. And he couldn't even go to the restroom by himself. Well, did he have a chance? Did he thought of himself as, you know, is God still accepting me? Can I go back to God? Well, at the end, it's a miracle, by the way. Three days before he died, he gave his heart to God. And I consider that as a miracle. For he was my grandfather, and I prayed for him day and night with my mom for a decade, literally. So just like Grandpa Joe, can I give my life at last moment, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Guys, like, come on. Like, you can do this stuff, you know? You can go to, you can go to, you know, to your laptop and play League of Legends for now. And then you later on store your Bible. First things first, for you to enjoy what's more pleasurable, right? So why can, I, why can we not do that? All right, the scripture reading. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. So God already helped you out, even though you're lost right now. What is that supposed to mean? All right, let's continue on. Behold, now is a favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So God is speaking to you right now. And God even said, I already have saved you. If you just believe and follow my way, you're already saved. How simple is that? But why do we need to, going back to the question, why do we need to follow God's way right now, today. Are we promised of tomorrow? No. Then are we promised of 30 seconds from now? Are we promised of one second from now? Oh, it is good. Are we pro <laughs> okay, you get the point. You're not going to face tomorrow. Okay. My story. I was born into a half Adventist home, and it was interesting. While growing up, I would have this kind of, you know, confusion in my mind. One day, I went to, you know, went out to eat with my dad because my mom was working on that day, and we were just having, you know, enjoyable dinner, you know, with his friends and stuff like that. And we ate a nicely done Korean barbecue, which was pork. It was so good. But, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> and I told my mom about that. You know, mom, you know, I ate pork today and it tasted so good. <laughs> and my mom's like, didn't you learn about what to not to eat, you know, what to eat? And I, I thought, you know, I did, but my dad told me to just eat it because, you know, my, my dad isn't an Adventist, even to nowadays. So I was confused growing up. I was a half Adventist. 
hours, half Adventist and half not. All right, sound familiar, Laodicean? All right, so I had a pretty much Laodicean life from the beginning. So I didn't know what's going on, you know? I'm so confused. Let me be me, you know? Let me be me, just like I'm going to do what I feel like doing. So I follow my friends. So after elementary school, which was like this, you know, it went just like this. So I went to the middle school from seventh grade. I went to Seoul. And there was a place called um, School of Star from East. So that was a seventh elementary school, middle school, just amazing. And there I found, there I lost my weight, you know? I said I ate lots of pork, right? I gained a lot of weight from eating those. And, you know, I praise the Lord for the health message that the Adventism have. You know, I used to be, like, obese. I used to be very fat, actually, you know. And by going to that school, I lost my weight. And it was amazing. I could think better, and I could just, I could play piano better, praise the Lord. I could play violin better, and it was just an amazing thing. So, the day came for America, you know. My brother one day came to me and knocking on my door. Hey, bro, I got to talk to you. I was like, what's up, man? Man, this guy doesn't talk to me usually. This is serious. I was like, all right. <clears throat> what's your name? I was like, <clears throat> um, he's going on like a dad mode. He was like pretty much like my dad because growing up, like my parents were so busy. My brother would be my parent kind of. So I was like, hey, Kyle, man. I, grew, I watched you growing up and you're like so old now. And now you're, it's time for you to pick which high school you want to go. All right, so I'm going to go to one in Seoul, of course, Samyuk um, High School, right? And then it's like, no, we're not going to go there. You're going to go to my school. <laughs> I was like, where's your school? Um, Oklahoma? Where's Oklahoma? I know California. I know New York. I know, um, I know <laughs> Washington. <laughs> where's Oklahoma? <laughs> I thought of myself, I was like, are you crazy? Are you serious? Where, why am I going there? It's like, why? Why? I'm not going to go there. Please, let me be me. And because I was still having that you know, half Adventist and half not life there, you know, let me be me, man. I have so many friends there in Korea. You know, we get to go to, you know, Korean net cafes, you know, playing um, video games for how long? I don't know. Eight hours a day? Literally eight hours a day? That's... That was my life, you know? After finals are over, eight hours, um, <laughs> spending the net cafe, and I would just be dull, thinking nothing, thinking nothing of my future, thinking I, I was hopeless, actually, but I did not know because I was like a fish in the water. I did not know what state I was in. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and then my brother got more serious. You're coming, bro. Mom is praying for you. Your pastor is praying for you. You're coming. I was like, okay. He's being spiritual. So I did go. I, I did come here. You know, since my ground that I was standing was neither hot or cold, I was a very naive person. And I'm still am. I think I'm very naive because I somewhat have this longing in my mind that cannot be dissolved with anything else. But there was music that I found that was very helping for my life and for, to sustain my emotions and feeling. For it was not endurable for me with the mental mentality that numbed for so many years with games and with something that I enjoyed. I couldn't think. <clears throat> First year, it was rough. <laughs> First year was so rough, and I couldn't understand anything. I couldn't understand not even a single sentence. I mean, a little bit like, you know, how are you? I can't understand that. No, I had a rough year. I was <laughs> melted ice cream. <laughs> Mrs. Holland knows that. She, uh, do you remember that? Yeah, you have to give me more. Like, I, I didn't know, like, the, I, I was supposed to put the ice cream, like, whole box of ice cream there, there put into the freezer. <laughs> but I put it in the walk-in cooler, so <laughs> everything got melted. I was that knife. I was in this, you know, like, I was so sleepy, you know, that leg, you know. I was, everything was so crushed, you know. 
They're like, where's Net Cafe? You know, where's where is that? You know, computer rooms and stuff like that. I was very confused. There seems to be no environment that is very familiar to, for me personally. I had this longing in my mind for a long time, and then I heard a sermon on something that I don't remember, and I heard Mr. Holland talking about give your heart today, and I was like, how do you give your heart today? You know, I prayed my pray to God every day, you know, before the meal. But how do I pray? Like, like when you just you know just kneel down and just like God, I'm giving your heart right now. Is that how it works? Like, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know how that works. So I went to one of the saying um, in the scripture. And the scripture was very confusing. I didn't know what one word was saying. Literally. And then, <clears throat> I got bored. And then when... That's when God spoke to my heart. Keep reading. You're going to find something there. And as I was kept going, kept going, kept going, and I didn't understand most of them because I, didn't, I wasn't familiar with English, but I was reading English Bible for some reason. You know, I, I thought it, it would help my English. So I would do it. And I come to this passage. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Okay? God, if this is the will that you really want me to do, make this very easy for me. And God talked to me that just say that you're giving your heart to me right now. And I didn't know how that worked. And then I just did that. Little did I know about God. Continuing... I went back to Korea after that rough year, and everything went, just went back. I went back to my old lifestyle. I went back to the lifestyle of just playing games and doing nothing, actually. Um, you know, I would play piano, but piano was not interesting, actually, for me. You know how I, uh, I started playing piano and violin? I went to this party, actually. Um, you know, it's not like an American party. It's like, it's like this New Year's party with your friends, you know? Like, you get to talk to people and you talk to your friends. And it was happened to be at my brother's academy. You know, we have this called Hagwon in Korea that you get to learn your extra materials, you know, from outside of school. So it was like piano Hagwon. So literally meaning the place where you learn. So, and the piano teacher talked to me. Why don't you learn how to play piano? Okay. And here I am. I can play piano. I enjoy it. And God can... God bless, actually. And that's how it was, the Christianity work to me. I was naive. I didn't know anything about God. And then God spoke to me. Just come to me. And I will help you. Just look at this picture. What do you think? <laughs> hmm. I was chasing for this life. I was looking for the life of excitement. I was looking for the life of something that I can enjoy, something that is the most pleasurable, appealing, attractive for me, and something I can just enjoy which are things that is cool. And there I was. I was really like this. I was depressed for I don't know how long. For, let's see, four years. I was really depressed. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't even talk to my parents. I didn't even talk to my siblings. I didn't even talk to anyone. I didn't talk to anyone. And all I do is, did one only was just practicing piano, um, play violin, um, playing games. <laughs> that was it. First things first. 
Why was I doing that? Because I didn't know about God. Because I did not know how salvation worked. Because I didn't know that today can be the day of salvation. Okay, going back to my grandpa's story, I am the first generation of Adventists. My mom had a very rough life. Um, she actually didn't want to marry my dad, actually, you know. It was out of blindfold marriage. Um, my mom was at the age of 21 uh, when she got married, and she had her first child, George, and then things went a little bit rough. You know, just like what I said about my grandfather, he was a drunkard, and once they were living together with my grand, um, grandparents and, you know, my mom and my dad, they had a rough, rough year. My, my dad learned that abusive behavior from his father, that um, left lots of pain to my mom. And they separated for five years. And then, <clears throat> I don't know how this worked, but I don't know the whole entire story of this, but somehow they got me. I wasn't supposed to be born. By the way, I was not supposed to be born. Uh, my mom and my dad were supposed to divorce, and that was the end of their marriage life. But I don't know, maybe it was a blessing. I hope it was a blessing for them. <laughs> um, and through having me, my mom got converted to Adventism. And from their trials, you know, my mom still have a lot of trials now. I need to pray for her. Please pray for her and for my family. My dad is still not an Adventist. Anyways, for those who have same similar situations, you know what I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about. You are standing on this infirmity. Your parents aren't even showing you God, and you don't know what to do. Well, let me tell you something. God did something in my life by bringing my mom into the truth, all right? Just one, one minute. God brought my mom into the light, and here I am. I can stand in the truth in Adventism today, and I can be at this school today. And if my mom had procrastinated, to serve God on that day, I would have been here. Can you, can you tell me? You see, you see how this works? If you make one choice right now, that's going to affect someone else's life later. And I was so shocked by this. And let's read our text again. All together. All right, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. For he says... In a favorable time, I listened to you, and in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I appeal to you, my fellow Asians, that today is your day of salvation, and then you don't have to fear. Okay, six reasons why you should, you should not be converted into Christianity. Six reasons. I will give you, and I will give you one reason at the end, and will be end. I'm sorry, we're going over in my promise. I'm sorry, I'm a procrastinator. Sorry, I even procrastinate to prepare for this presentation, so I'm not. I'm still guilty of <laughs> procrastinator. All right, first one. You know, there's too many things to offer. You know, world is too attractive. You know, how can I do this? Second thing, I'm gonna lose all my friends. Third thing, I'm gonna lose my. Let me be me, you know? Can I be just me? Fourth one. I'm not going to be as successful if I give my heart to God right now. Fifth one. I'm not going to make it because I'm not a perfectionist and I know there are so many infirmities. Sixth one. It's too hard. Christianity seems boring and it's not convincing and it doesn't help my life. That's what I thought. Well, it helps a lot. Last reason that you should be a Christian right now. You don't know anything about life right now. Because this life we are living right now is not the life that we're going to have. It's nothing compared to the life that we're going to have at the end of the time. Okay, let's say you're living 100 years at the maximum, you know? And then how many years are we going to live when you go to that country, heavenly country? And when the New Jerusalem is rebuilt, how many years are we going to live? How many years are 100 years compared to eternity? Nothing. Can you count eternity? No. 
Give your heart to God today, for your salvation is today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you for our infirmities are great and we know that we are so unwilling to be willing and we have a heart of stone. We are blinded by those forces of Satan that we don't even realize and Satan always takes advantage of that. Lord, help us realize like a fish out of water to follow you and to know that your way works, that you, your way is better than us, that you know better than us. Lord, I pray today, the ones who want to give their hearts to God, help them. Please help them to be firm in you, be strong in you, that you will carry on, that they would remember the promise that you gave to them in you, that we can do all things, we can endure all things that are set before us to get us from you. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit, for your help. In Jesus' name, amen.